So if you thought that the Iowa caucus was crazy up until this point, it's even crazier than you could imagine in your wildest dreams. So there are a bunch of known mistakes in the Iowa caucus data. Let me repeat that. Known mistakes in the Iowa caucus data. Some places were double counted. Some weren't counted at all. There's a bunch of math errors. Basically, any kind of mistake you could think of, it exists in the Iowa caucus data. Now, here's where you, a normal person, goes, okay, Kyle, so they should fix it. <laughs> no, that's not what they're doing. I. You want to talk about making people lose faith in democracy. This story says it all. Um, look at what the New York Times reporter Trip Gabriel told us the other day. This is quoting an opinion in an internal email from an IDP attorney. IDP stands for Iowa Democratic Party. Look. The incorrect math on the caucus math worksheets must not be changed to ensure the integrity of the process. The incorrect math on the caucus worksheets, caucus math worksheets, must not be changed to ensure the integrity of the process. So they say... Oh, oh, you don't get it. That, those are legal documents. If you change a legal document, it's illegal. So you can't fix the mistakes. I don't even know what to say. I'm at a loss for words. I am at a loss for words on the Kyle Kalinske show on Secular Talk. Very rare, but it just happened. Some things are so stupid, you can't even muster a response. There's nothing there. <laughs> There's blankness running through my head. That's the craziest thing I've ever heard in my life, ever. It's not even close. So, it, it, it gets worse. It gets worse, believe it or not. I know it, like... Seems like it can't get worse. It does. So CNN wrote an article about this. By the way, they declared a winner. Half the news outlets are like, we can't declare a winner. We see even NBC, Steve Kornacki, he's the numbers guy for NBC. He's like, I, I see outstanding incorrect data. Like, I see the mistakes. I'm not going to declare a winner when you added wrong so, like, half the news outlets, or maybe even more than half the news outlets, are like, we're not going to... We see the mistakes, too. We see them. <laughs> but CNN, right before Mayor Pete did a town hall, they go, oh, uh, 100% of the vote in, Mayor Pete wins. So they give him his, like, fourth surge in positive coverage in an attempt to get him over the top in New Hampshire. And temporarily, he surged into a tie with Bernie in New Hampshire. Now, thankfully, he did terrible in the debate, and there was a Cloba surge, and the Cloba surge has taken away from Mayor Pete, so everything kind of went back to homeostasis, where Bernie has a relatively solid lead in New Hampshire. But this stuff is wild, man. But CNN says the following. What went wrong? While some precinct officials told CNN that the software performed as needed, this is the app, others experienced problems with the app and the reporting process. One precinct chair in Iowa described the failure of the app to CNN, saying that the app got stuck on the very last step when reporting results, which was uploading a picture of the precinct's results. The chair said they were able, they were finally able to upload the results and screenshotted what they uploaded, but the app showed different numbers than what they had submitted as captured in their screenshot. The app was changing votes. By the way, there's a follower of mine on Twitter who did a, a, a graph breakdown of where those mistakes were made. Sit down. You're going to be shocked to find this out. Most of the mistakes went against Bernie. The good news is the Bernie campaign is not taking this laying down. That night, 
couple nights ago where CNN said, oh, 100% counted, uh, Pete wins. The Bernie campaign did a press release where they said, actually, we won, not just the popular vote, but also the state delegate equivalents, which is what they're using to determine the winner. And they laid out the specific mistakes in the specific precincts that make Bernie get over the top. Listen, I there's this guy by the name of Taniel who's been breaking this down a thousand ways to Sunday, and he's on top of it, giving you all the specifics. Hey, there's a mistake here. Hey, there's a mistake here. If you count everything properly, Bernie wins. Bernie wins. So I, I know that. Now you know that. If they do try to say, when all said and done, after the re-canvas, the recount, that Pete wins, just know it's in the open. It's in the open. They're trying to steal the election. It's not a question. It's not up in the air. That is what they're doing. And when they go as far as to say stuff like, oh, we have to preserve the incorrect math to keep the integrity of the process. They're not even trying to hide it. They're not. And then we learned in, in Nevada, one of the people who's in charge of protecting the vote count is worked on Mayor Pete's campaign. Never mind in some, you know, sleazy financial institution that was involved in God knows what kind of fuckery. So there's all types of problems, man. And I, I hate to be conspiratorial, but what are you supposed to do when all the evidence and all the data in front of you points in that direction? And you would have to be, you would have to have a cinder block where your brain is supposed to be in order to not see conspiracy written all over this. Again, it's out in the open. So I'll just come out and say it. And some people will disagree with me saying this. Some people will think I'm going too far. If Bernie Sanders loses New Hampshire, it's rigged rigged. <laughs> it's rigged rigged. And I say that because the polls for the longest time have had him. I mean, some polls have him 15 points up in New Hampshire. You know, uh, on average, he's probably up seven. That's not that's not a thing where you just lose it. That doesn't happen. They're trying to say Mayor Pete surged 14 points in a week. Based on fake declaring victory in Iowa and the media, you know, telling him nonstop he's the winner and trying to puff him up, I, I simply do not believe it. I don't believe it. So sorry, but if you th oh, Kyle's putting on his tinfoil hat. What do you want me to do in a situation where in Iowa, Pete's campaign put over 40 grand into the app that was used to count the results and they're openly saying, hey, it was switching results at the end. We got stuck on the last step and it was switching results. How do you get a situation like we had where they gave um, Bernie support to Tom Steyer and Deval Patrick? How do you get that happen? And then, by the way, why is it they fixed some of that, but now they're saying we can't fix any math results that are on the worksheets? They're, it, they're doing it in real time, man. So here's what I propose. Bernie called for a re-canvas in certain precincts. Okay, great. Wait until you get those results from those certain precincts. If they come back and try to say Pete won anything, sue him. Sue him. I'm, guys, I literally trust the judicial process and even a right-leaning judge more than I trust the people who are in charge of counting this. Namely, the DNC, who screwed Bernie in 2016, and the Iowa Democratic Party, who's obviously now in cahoots with the DNC and with CNN, by the way. They sat on the results until Pete had a town hall, and then they tried to say, 100% counting, Pete won. And when people were like, hey, here's specific mistakes that would put Bernie over the top, they were like, what? No hablo inglés, what? We don't know what you're saying. Okay, yet again, I, man, sometimes I say things on this show, and I'm amazed at how right I am. <laughs> what did I say? Bernie has to overwin in order to win. If you just look at the, the vote count, there were 180,000 people who participated in the caucus in Iowa. Bernie won by over 6,000 votes when all said and done. That's about a 3.5% victory. That's not really a small victory. That's a medium-sized victory. In order for Bernie to win, he probably needs to win by over 5%, maybe even 10%. So just so you know, he has to overwin in order to win. So don't say I didn't tell you. We moving forward, no messing around. We gotta, you better be doubly involved, triply involved. And you know, as far as as you've been involved to this point, double it, triple it, because it's necessary in order to win. And again, if we get to the point where, 
let's say Bernie wins um, the most votes but doesn't get a majority, so he doesn't win it on the first ballot, it has to go to the second ballot. We're not letting it stand if they try to take it from him. That's not happening. We will go to the DNC, the convention, and we will. there will be millions of us marching in the streets demanding that the person with the most votes becomes the nominee. And if they try to jack it from us, um, we're not going to let that happen. But if indeed that happens, congratulations to Donald Trump on winning his second term. So this is what's going on in Iowa. We got New Hampshire coming up um, tomorrow from, you know, when this segment is being done. It's coming up tomorrow. Um, and we'll see what happens. Like I said, if Bernie wins, the question is how much Bernie wins by if there's no fuckery. If there is fuckery, then somebody else could win. So there, I said it. You're not supposed to say stuff like that, but I think you would have to be a silly person to not acknowledge that given everything that we know that happened in Iowa. 